This is Julia. She's a potter, ceramicist and maker. She lives in Cornwall with her husband David and daughters Ellie and Chloe and she works from her garden studio which she shares with her tortoises Pippin and Puck. She draws inspiration from being outdoors, going on walks in the country and things she spots in the garden. She sells her work through shops and galleries as well as regularly attending local craft fairs. Having grown up on a farm, she loves to spend time with friends and family, whether that's walking, cycling, or when the weather's good, swimming in the sea. Today I chat with Julia about working in clay, her artist retreat to Italy, and the importance of being open to learning new things. I'm Mal Chadwick, this is episode 7, welcome to Creative Conversations. Hi guys, welcome to another Creative Conversation. Today I am in the lovely studio of Julia Crimmen. Welcome Julia. Thank you very much, thanks for having me. Could you tell us a bit about what you do? Well, I'm a potter. Um, I use porcelain mainly and I make pots, cups, mugs, jugs and small sculptural animals and collectibles. Yeah. Based mainly on the countryside, I get a lot of my inspiration from the garden and although I'm not a very good gardener, I take a lot of my <laughs> inspiration from grasses and kind of the things you'd find in the hedgerow, brambles and yeah. Brilliant. kind of thing. And um, how did you actually get into doing um, pottery and ceramics? Um, I've always made, ever since I was tiny, and been at drawing and um, crafts of all different sorts. And when I, um, the, my girls were a little bit older, and my husband said, "Just do it. Go back and uh, and you've got time." I was working part time at the time. Um, go back and make something do a course so I've managed to find uh the foundation course mm -hmm. in art and design at Falmouth yeah so I started that as a part-time mature student was that difficult going in back into the classroom as a <laughs> I mature? thought it would be I really thought it would be but um there were I think 12 mature students yeah. on the course and they were all just so lovely and so amazing and I've kept in touch with everybody yeah. since then so that was in 2006 yeah and um, so I did that part time and right at the very end, I, th I thought I would be a printmaker to start with. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I spent my whole time in the print studios with lovely Dina O'Brien that now yeah. runs Kiwi Print. So um, I did a lot of stuff down there with, with Dina and um, I started with collagraphs yeah. and um, embossing into paper and then that led to embossing into ceramics. And so at the very end of the, the foundation course I my final piece was embossed ceramics oh wow and then from there um I couldn't really find very many ceramics courses uh but I did just one morning a week at Truro College um and just loved it and just tried everything tried things um slab built uh mold making all all kinds of things I just didn't know what I wanted to do and um, they had a guy come in and just do a summer school just uh, for a week in the summer who showed us how to use the potter's wheel. And I was like, this is heaven. <laughs> so, uh, so that's what I did. I bought an old um, potter's wheel off the yeah. internet. And I think maybe Noah made it because it was all made of wood. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was huge. It took up my whole studio, but it was amazing. Wow. It just gave me yeah. the starting point. You just need to yeah. make, make and make and make, squash it all up and start again. Didn't really keep anything for ages. The first things that I did make 
I thought it was quite a big lump of clay and bits flew off it and I ended up with a tiny piece just big enough to put a tea light in yeah. but I just thought this is great so um so from there I did some more throwing courses with um Jack Doherty at yeah. the New Lynn School so I did an intensive course with him and when we first got there we all sat around and he said what do you want to get out of this course and um I said I would just like to sit at the wheel and think right I'm going to make this shape rather than oh this is going to be a bowl this is going to be a tall shape (laughs) so more intentional exactly exactly so and gradually people started to buy my work and um which gave me kind of more uh confidence Mm. to um to make more and try new things and uh and it's kind of developed from there really and now here you are with your own in my shed (laughs) in the shed in the garden and it is a it's a really nice studio space it's beautiful a making space um, where you can do all your making what kind of equipment have you got here so I've got my potter's wheel which again um I bought from eBay yeah. you know it wasn't it's not a very fancy one um and uh I did initially have a kiln which I bought second hand and it was very small and it just had a um it's a kiln sitter device which has pyrometric bars right. in it and so it was kind of not very easy to control and with porcelain, um, it kind of has a mind of its own anyway, so you need to kind of control it a little bit if you can. Um, and so I've invested in a new kiln now, so I've had that for probably um, two years, and that's brilliant because I can program it to the degree and yeah. it, it works really well. And it's a little bit bigger because although my stuff is small, I was outgrowing my little kiln that I yeah. had already. And the kiln and the potter's wheel are the main things and then gradually I've just added stuff and a lot of things you can kind of make yourself. Yeah. Um, luckily my husband is really, really good and he makes all my wooden um Yeah, I bats can see you've got and, lots of wooden, are they called bats? Bats, yeah, so bats. Um, I use them to throw onto. So <laughs> once they've been thrown on the wheel, yeah. I leave them to dry and just go leather hard Okay. and then you can handle them a little bit more. Okay. Then I turn them or decorate them. Some I've been doing a lot of carved pieces just recently so when it's leather hard you can carve then you put your handles on then um I bag them up I, right. and put them in my kitchen which as you saw on the way in the table is always full of pots and uh, so I bag them up and that's just so that the the slightly damper handles can acclimatize to the slightly drier pots you want them to be the same kind of dampness leather hard yeah before you can um so they dry out evenly then yeah so I've got things bagged in various areas then they get the first firing in the kiln and that goes up to about um a thousand degrees and that's called a bisque firing yeah and then once they've been bisked then you can either I use the ceramic pencils to draw sort of hedgerow designs or um, I'll glaze them with my coloured glazes and then they go back in the kiln. For the second. For the second firing and that's up to um, 1250 degrees and that makes them, they, it vitrifies the clay which makes it kind of a, a glassy body together with okay. the glaze. Cool. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's a long really process good. really. Um, but is that the same for any kind of clay or because you work Similar. with porcelain I mainly work with porcelain but I have been using a little bit of stoneware just recently I go down to Richard Fithian's studio um which is down near Pra Sands and um I use his stoneware and he also uses red earthenware clay so it's just nice to use a different material because you handle it in a slightly different way um the the cups and mugs and things that I make at Richard's are slightly um more kind of country style um whereas my porcelain ones I try to get them quite fine and you get the very smooth um finish yeah and they take the the porcelain clay takes the glaze in a different way so um but it's it's nice to go and do something else and plus there's maybe eight or ten other potters in the studio at the same time and it's really good to get that kind of feedback and yeah kind of encouragement and you see what other people are doing and they and you think oh I've never tried that before and we've done um some raku firing which I'd never done before yeah. and just recently we've done some smoke fired pieces 
So Richard built a big... Um, is that like a smoke, a smoke pit or a something? Pit. Yeah, he, ma- he made it out of bricks and then we put sawdust yeah. and newspaper and some twigs and things in it and then we smoke fired things but you just don't know what you're no. going to get depending where the, the smoke is or if it's next to another pot you don't get as much smoke yeah. come through. So I've got a few smoke fired pieces in the other shed that you'll see later. Oh, brilliant. So what is it about working in ceramic and clay? Do you, do you actually enjoy um, I think part? I like the versatility um, and I quite like the unexpectedness in a way. Uh, the, with working out in the shed, sometimes I'm, I think, oh, well, I, have, I need to throw some pots, so I do some throwing on the wheel. Then the next day I can do some sculptural pieces. And then the next day I can do some slip decoration. And then the next day I could do some carving. So it, every day I think, oh, I could do something different. And there's so many techniques it's like anything really there's so much to learn you never really think I know it I know it now there's always something you can do but I think that's an important attitude isn't it that you've got to have probably as a maker definitely definitely it's still so much that I don't know and I'm a member of um the Cornwall Ceramics and Glass group and they put on um a monthly uh, either a talk or a visit and uh you get some really well-known potters come down and you just totally inspired by that and you think I really don't know anything (laughs) you know compared to these guys so do you think that's also kind of how you stay motivated as well yeah probably and I do love I really do love it you know and just every day I come out to the shed and I just think oh this is I'm really lucky to be out here I've worked in schools um the majority of my working time which I loved as well but um I don't think you can be being your own boss yeah and doing your own things. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, exactly. Yeah, brilliant. Um, let's talk about how do you promote your work? How do you like, you know, sell it, and how do you let people know about your new ranges? Okay. Um, well, I'm not very computer literate, <laughs> but luckily I've got teenage daughters who are yeah. pretty good, and um, so they've managed to um, get me onto Facebook, and which I always thought was. Not a good thing. So <laughs> yeah. not, when my daughter's in her GCSEs, I banned her from Facebook. But um, I use it for my business and uh, put photos on there. And if I've made a new thing or if I'm doing a fair or I'm doing a show or something, I'll put a photo and a little comment. And usually that kind of being, reminds people that you're around. But Instagram has been brilliant. I've really oh, right. enjoyed yeah. using Instagram. Yeah. So um, I usually put a photo on of just a you know, this is what I've made today, or these are some new pieces, or, and um, I I sell from that as well as get more followers and oh, more okay. interest come So back. you get people just comment below or yeah. say, where can they get that? Yeah, and, exactly, yeah, yeah, or they'll private message me, and um, I take a few commissions as well, so um, people will send me photos then, and I'll make a make an animal or something for them. Um, and um, I do open studios, and that's been a really good way of advertising the business um I've done it for four years now and I've had each year more people have come and I've had repeat visitors and once they know I'm here yeah. and I am out in the garden most of the time people pop by and um so if they've got birthdays or christenings and things they know they can pop out and see yeah. me anytime I think that's really good isn't it because you can open up you know your space people like to come and touch things they don't do they? And, and they like to see where it's see, made see yeah. you as well I'd see the creator I think so uh, the galleries have been brilliant for me and um there's uh Four Crows in Port Levin was oh, the yeah. very first place yeah. that I managed to sell work through Susie had things for me and that's been great and loads of people will come and say oh we've seen your work at Four Crows or wherever and um so that's that's another good so you think it is important to kind of sell your work in you know what I'd say bricks and mortar shops I think so it just kind of reminds people that you're still there and not everybody can come out to the the studio and see me out here and um if I just sat here waiting for people I wouldn't see anyone (laughs) so uh to have I've probably got maybe um eight or nine galleries that sell work for me and I just um kind of it keeps me busy through the rest of the year keeping them all topped up yeah yeah is that mainly in Cornwall um yes and I've got a couple in Devon now as well sort of um one in Taunton and one in Axminster so yeah in terms of like selling and being prepared for busy periods 
I'm guessing Christmas is going to be your... It's definitely the busiest yeah. time of year. The autumn time is always busy. So believe it or not, I have been making Christmas tree decorations <laughs> for, for weeks and weeks. Only because if I make a dozen or so at a time, it's nicer than if I sit down and think, OK, I've got to make a hundred of these now. So I spread them as much as I can. And um, and also you're experimenting through the, re- the rest of the year and coming up with some ideas and different designs um, rather than leaving it all till yeah. October <laughs> and thinking, oh, what am I going to make for Christmas? Is that so. something that you've kind of learnt over your time? It is, yeah. yeah. Don't leave it to the last minute. <laughs> Be prepared. And especially with clay, things firings don't go well sometimes and you think oh right I can cram in another firing before Christmas and then it goes wrong and then you haven't got enough stock so be prepared definitely yeah work work ahead of schedule and at least then you've got it and it keeps things a little bit uh, calmer I probably do about um four or five um craft fairs each sort of autumn time and they are you know really good then and and it's lovely to go out and see who is actually buying your work yeah and it's uh, really sociable and the people that I've met doing the craft fairs have been wonderful and they're really good friends now so I really do enjoy doing the fairs. Yeah. What kind of fairs would you recommend? Um, well I've really enjoyed doing the Bedruthen fair. Um, Heligan's been excellent, it's been really good and again that's a garden based fair so my work works quite yeah. well there and um, Etsy in St Ives, the Etsy Made Local Fair has been brilliant and um, this year I'll be helping out on the um, the Etsy committee for that as well. So I'm really looking forward to taking part, we've got lots of plans to kind of make it um, a, um, a recycled event, lots of oh, brilliant. recycled like- packaging and um, we're getting on board with Surface Against Sewage and being coastal, that's kind of another thing that's uh, important to us all. That's about your pottery retreat. Um, well, um, that was an amazing adventure. Um, I obviously go and use Richard's studio um, once a week through um, through the year. Um, and he was um, telling us that he, we wouldn't be able to come and use the studio for this particular time because he was going to be teaching in Tuscany. Wow. So we said, oh, that sounds amazing. Can we come? And he said, yes, come along. <laughs> so we, uh, a, a couple of us went. And it was the most amazing adventure. It was brilliant. We stayed at a beautiful place in Tuscany called La Meridiana. And uh, we did slip decoration Mm -hmm. and worked with Richard's uh, red earthenware um, clay. And he'd got some beautiful slips and glazes made up. And so we really experimented with different um, techniques for slip decorating painting. And um, I embossed plants um, and things into the clay and so we were there um, from Sunday to Friday just making 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 out in the so totally immersed oh it was amazing (laughs) we started at eight in the morning and some nights I wasn't getting back till eight in the evening which was great so we we made as much as we possibly could the first couple of days so that it could all go in the kiln and then we could decorate and things afterwards so no, it was a. So it was you would great. definitely re- recommend those kind of experiences. Brilliant, yes, definitely. La Meridiana, they do um, lots of different courses. They do um, smoke fire courses and oh. wood fire rings, and and it's the most beautiful place. So yeah, yeah I definitely recommend. Okay. Again, yeah, it's a super place. <clears throat> Ahead, um, where would you like your business to be in one year's time, and then maybe five years time? Um, well. If I could be doing the same, that'd be amazing. <laughs> that'd be really great. Um, yeah. My youngest daughter goes off to uni in September, so that's going to give me a bit more free time um, to to make more. And I would like to progress my designs, and I'd like to incorporate some different materials as well. So I've got some um, course, more courses and things in the pipeline to um, incorporate some maybe willow, uh, some other materials oh, wow. within within the ceramics. So that's another little project that um, is uh, is on the, on the horizon, which would be great. So it'd be nice to kind of I, you know it's great to learn new skills and to be able to combine it with the ceramics would be yeah fab. That, that sounds really good. Mm, yeah. So I'd like to keep pushing it forward and making new more new things and. Yeah. Uh, and uh, maybe um, get doing some, some fairs and things that are outside of the county. What advice would you give to your younger self? Um, I would probably say to be braver. Be brave 
um, some have confidence in what you're doing and in yourself and just to just to try things if it doesn't work out it doesn't matter but yeah at least you've tried um, so maybe yeah, I would definitely say be braver and take take a leap every yeah. now and then yeah all right thank you so much for letting us come thank you that's been great talk to you um, guys don't forget to check out all of Julia's links I'll leave them all below and um, go and go and find her work on um, the internet and I will see you again guys for another creative conversation bye <laughs>
kind of gnomes or anything, but just no. making it for the place yeah. and the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, really lovely. How did they start it? I mean, was it a long... I don't know. I how how long don't... they've been going and, and, like, how they built it and they must have, like... I think it's been going quite a long, a long time yeah. to get to the point I think where it, they are. when he started, it was, there was nothing. nothing and he's yeah. built, physically built, built the place, the place. yeah. yeah. Um, and there's a big pond and stuff down there. And then... Um, yeah, we were having these three course lunches with wine and, and it was really lovely because the people, there was a really lovely girl from Turkey, from she was in Istanbul, there was a lovely lady from um, Slovenia was wow. there. So you got to meet... Lady from New Zealand, wow. yeah. And New Zealand, that's yeah. a long place, long yeah. way to come. They were on a real travel, her and her husband, um, they left New Zealand and then they travelled all through Europe and they... They stayed, he did a motorbike, like off-road motorbike yeah. course while she did the pottery course. And then he came and met her at, at La Meridiana for the last, I don't know, three nights or something. Yeah. And then they went on then to south of France and they, I don't even know if they're back yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something she wants me to post for her, so. 